Welcome back to part three of our ongoing series about Sibelius. In this video, I want to talk about real time entry of notes, what they call flexitime entry. But before we do, I want to show you two other methods of entering notes that I didn't mention in the last video. In the View tab, I clicked on the keyboard and fretboard here. So I select a measure I want to add a note in, click on it. In that case, it's literally that F. I want to put chords in, different options here. I use the arrow key to move. Same thing with the fretboard. The odd with the ones. I'm in chord mode. So the next one. And note values, you still have to use the keypad to change it there. But that's two examples. And these can be floated floating windows or they can uh, go in their normal spot down at the bottom. Now what they call flexitime entry, you'll find under note input. And there are some options which bear looking at. You can specify in the notation tab whether to adjust the values by having minimum durations. Like if you know you're not going to play anything faster than an eighth note, then select an eighth note. So I think I will do that. If you know you're going to use triplets, you have several options in here for that. You can also, if you want to get real picky, staccato and tenuto and many options. For the most part, just worry about this one. Adjust your rhythms to the smallest value you're going to play and what type of triplets you're going to have. And then over here, I play pretty straight rhythm. I don't change tempos too much, but if you do, as you play, you can change these to help you. And the tempo will actually adjust to your playing. It does a pretty good job doing that. You can specify whether to replace the music or to overdub the music. And then here we have a choice of recording into multiple voices. I really didn't talk about that too much in the last video, but let's look down here in this one. In your keypad, you've got one, two, three, four. That's the maximum number of voices you can have. So let's say I put in an E, and I put in a D. If I want to go to voice two, click on voice two, and let's say we want to put half notes in here. So we select the note we want. And this is an example of voices. You don't see that in solo instruments, but in keyboard music for sure, you're going to see that. Guitar music. So that's how you do that. So if you're doing a piano piece, which is what we're going to do, just to give you an example, new, for four time, let's put this in a major key. This time, we won't worry about all the titles and everything because we can always add that later. So we come down here, select where we want to start because you can always start in the middle of a piece. So start here, and we're going to record both stabs. Now I'll come over here to the record button, and it will start the flex of time. Gives me an introduction. And there you have it. That is, in my opinion, is the easiest way to enter music into Sibelius if you're a keyboard player. If you're not, you're better off using the, the hands uh, on the keyboard, using the, the QWERTY keys and the hand on the keypad. Notice also when you do flex the time input, for keyboard music, it does a pretty good job of splitting the staff, but not always. So here you end up with the notes in the wrong staff. You can always select that note, Control X to 
cut, click on the half rest where it belongs, control V and paste. And it puts it in the right spot. You notice also this was wrong. It should be a quarter note. I played it a bit too short. So you can simply select it and then press the 4 key on your keypad and you're back to what it should be. I'm going to control Z out of that though and go back to the original of what I recorded. And you'll notice I'm going to highlight these two measures. And you have an option here, Renotate Performance. I don't remember if I changed the alternate shift in combination to fit my needs or if that's default, but there are shortcuts for a great many of these, or just about everything up here, like Control Shift F for recording. But Renotate Performance is a good option. This also works when you're importing MIDI files, but when you're doing any sort of flex of time, it will help sort of correct the, the thing. So you can tell it whether you want to use what value notes you want. If you want to have triplets, two voices per staff, and whether you want to create a new instrument and so forth. And here it did something I wasn't expecting. I didn't expect the A to get put down there. But it did. Let's try that again. Only this time, we're going to tell it to do it with two voices per staff and see what we get. Same thing. Not exactly what we wanted. It's easy enough to delete that, select it, press the delete key, and then come here and add the A above. To add the A above, I'm going to click on the G and then type the 2 number on, above your key, keyboard, not the keypad, but the keyboard itself, and that will add an interval a second higher. And there we go. We have it. Just a little tip on that. If we have a D here, we want to add a third below that. We do shift and the three above your keyboard. Another thing you can do, which I didn't mention, is press the R key now. And then you can use the up arrow and move those. Repeat, R, repeat, and so forth. That's a quick way if you have a succession of notes. Uh, it doesn't have to be in thirds. It could just be single notes. Um, if you had a bunch of D. D, repeat, and then we go up. I'm pressing the R key and then the down arrow and up arrow respectively to get that in there too. I want to do an example of flex of time where you run into some problems. Let's say we go to 16th notes and we turn triplet on. And that looks good. Oh, this is a good option. If you want your metronome clicking when you're recording, have that one. Okay, we'll record. Okay, see what happened? We ended up with the same problem. I deliberately played short so we get this, but sometimes when you don't mean to play short, it does this anyhow. So the easiest thing to do is to renotate the performance. We don't need two staffs per voice. Notice it changed this around here. We don't want that. We want it up in the right hand part. So select just the right hand part and renotate. Got rid of the sixteenths, but well, we ended up with eights. Maybe that's what we want because I did play short. And we'll select in this measure and renotate the renotate the performance. And we get the eighth notes. Now it's easy in this point. I think one of the great things about Sibelius that I like better than other notation programs is once you have the notes in here, you can do an awful lot of editing with them. So let's say we want all these to be quarter notes. So we select both measures and we simply type the four key on the keypad and all the notes are going to become quarter notes. Pretty cool. Let me show you one other thing with flex of time entry. Get back to 
no input, record. We want to change one setting in here. Make sure I'm recording to multiple voices, which I am. I'm going to show you what that looks like. Control Shift F. Lovely, isn't it? Okay. And it didn't do what I played, basically. <laughs> Let's see what happens if we renotate the whole thing. Two voices, definitely, because I did play two notes. Don't think we had any sixteenth notes in here, really. So let's go back to eighth notes at the longest. Yeah, now that's really what I played. Where I held down the D while I played this. And then here I held these notes down. It's not terribly tonal in a few spots, but that's what I played. So when you're doing flex of time, which again, if you're a keyboard player, is definitely the fastest way to enter music. Renotate your performance will be will help you a lot. One thing I do a lot of is transcribing music. And when I'm doing keyboard music, unless it's as simple as this, I will play like if I'm doing a Bach fugue or something, I can play it, at least one hand of it, without any trouble. But there's so many voices and stuff going on. I will play in here, I will record into voice one, voice one, then I will go back for a second pass, record voice two, and if there's three and four voices, I'll go back and record it. Then I will move on and do the left hand same process. In the long run, that's a whole lot easier. Sometimes you run into an issue where you played, I'm pressing shift page down where you did flex the time entry and let's say you got a D sharp here which in the key of D you probably want but if you don't want it press the enter key when that notes highlighted and it changes it the enharmonic press enter changes press enter changes it'll even do it on notes that are in the key signature like that But when you press a note that's not a sharp or flat already, you won't get an inharmonic, which sometimes you might want. There it does work. But on like just a plain G, you press the inner key for the inharmonic, you don't get it. Even though technically that is an F double sharp or it could be an A double flat. You'd have to go in and move down here, go over to the keypad, find the double sharp. I know it's in there. And make it a double sharp that way. Anyhow, that's some, some more another way to enter music and some ways to do some editing. I'm going to take a closer look at editing your music in the next video.